and all morning we've been bringing to you the latest from Takrade and also in Accra, but also from the stables of the Ghana Police Service. And we all know uh, what had been the discussion, especially between Kojo Yangsen and Mamavi Uso Abwaje. Kojo Yangsen already, as announced, is in Takrade, had been uh, bringing to us the latest from the home of uh, Richlav Kwesen, but more so will be visiting the other families. There's supposed to be a press conference that, to sh that should start by the close of the hour, and it will be addressed by representatives of the three families and uh, we will also get more from the police subsequently. But uh, let's get more updates. Experience comes in handy. And um, one uh, person who has also been with us through it all has been uh, former head of the police CID. And um, retired COP Bright Odro is here once again. And good morning. Thank you for responding to our urgent call. But in the meantime, uh, we've had some concerns about the way the announcement was made by the police. And this one is coming from the families. But in such situations, um, how do you quickly and hurriedly try to do the communication as uh, heads of uh, criminal investigations and as a service? Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I don't know how the, <coughs> the communication was done. I have not been privy to that. Uh, but I think. Uh, Initially, we have been told that the girls were alive, simply put. And uh, now that DNA testing has been done, and, and it has proven that uh, the remains that were found in Takradi were indeed those of the girls, um, I think the police administration had to come out. It may not necessarily have to be the director general who initially uh, gave that assurance that the girls were alive. It, it should not have been he, her to do this kind of uh, job. I think the IGP, the acting IGP did it and I think it was in the right direction. He, as the head of the police, should do it, more especially when um, the assurance that they were alive has now been found not to be true. Okay. Um, the, the family said they had uh, visits from representatives of the police and I'm sure it will be the police heads in the region and subsequently representatives from Accra who came to their home at 7.30 in the evening. Um, that the, well, they had a problem with that, but is that normal procedure, or do you have peculiar procedures that you follow through? Is it 7.30 a.m. or p.m. yesterday? P.m. Yes, in yes. the evening. Well, I, I don't know. To announce this to them? To them. Yes. Well, I don't know when uh, this, the results of the DNA came, uh, but for, I think for the past two or three days, we've been hearing the results are out, and sooner or later, we will all be uh, made uh, aware of uh, the situation. Um, I think it depended on when they, they, they got the information, the DNA results. And I believe it, they felt it was necessary to immediately let the, the family know. So probably that explains why they went there at that time. But ordinarily, I think uh, maybe it should have been early in the day or maybe in the daytime. But as I said, they got the results and they felt that the family should immediately be made aware of the situation uh, before somebody else goes about uh, uh, rumor mongering. Mm. Now, uh, it would mean that the steps would have to be taken for full um, prosecution? I, I, is, that, is, that, is, that, is that it? Or w what now will be done with the, with the conclusion that has been drawn? It's, it's too early to <laughs> talk about <laughs> prosecution because... Okay. Uh, uh, the DNA was done to ascertain whether uh, those remains that were found were those of the girls. And now that they have been disclosed, it has been disclosed that these were the girls, uh, we need to conduct further investigation. The fact that one suspect or two suspects have been arrested does not necessarily lead to a conclusion that they killed the girls. So we need to conduct further investigation. The police need to conduct further investigation. Who killed the girls? Why were they killed? How were they killed? When were they killed? These are important questions that the police need to find out. Uh, so prosecution now is not the, the, the case now for, for the time being. Uh, they need to do a lot more. And I have always believed that the, the, the investigation should have been open open, especially when the remains were found, because while we, 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 we have found skeletal remains of some people unknown. 
If they were the girls, we need to find out who killed them. If they were not the girls, we need to establish the identity of those skeletal remains. So in either way, you need to conduct investigation because they have been found dead and in a, a manhole. I don't know whether the police have started investigating the murder. All, all along they have been looking at kidnapping, kidnapping. Now it's murder because they have been found dead. And I don't know whether they have started investigating this murder aspect. And I think they should have started at the time the, the, the meat remains were found. Who killed them? Why were they dumped there? When were they killed? And what was the motive behind the killing? So all these questions need to be answered. Um, we're just getting word uh, from uh, Linkman there. Koji Yangson has been on the beat uh, since the beginning of this whole um, on-pass. And we're getting the indication that the family will be addressing a press conference. The family, uh, pointedly, if you speak uh, to them and also try to collate uh, by observation what has been said in the media and reported widely on our various networks, are indicating that they don't seem to believe the conclusions drawn by the police and that they would want also to have samples of the remains and do some sort of independent verification by DNA or whatever it is on their own. Uh, does the law permit that? Is it possible? Oh yes, they, they, they can challenge the results of the DNA. Everybody has that right, I think. But uh, what was the purpose of the DNA? These girls were missing for some time, and then some remains were found somewhere in a manhole, and then they were, the remains were subjected to some testing, forensic testing, that is a DNA testing. And now, according to the police, the result is positive. So it means that those remains are the, those of the girls. DNA testing, I mean, you and I don't know how it is done, and uh, the family may not appreciate how it is done, how... I mean, whether the results are conclusive enough or not. They don't know. And so if they say they will challenge, I think it is, it, is, it is in the right direction. They can have their own sample. They can have samples and then maybe do further testing elsewhere. But, you see, I have always, I have said somewhere that uh, there are some forms of identification that can be done at any time. These remains were found. The skeletal remains were found. We had the skull indicating the denture of all these girls. Then we also had, I think, the hair, the hair mix or whatever, the three girls, they were also found. And then some waist beads were also found, uh, not only the skeletal remains. And so I have said, and I have indicated to some officers, police officers, that there was a need for probably physical identification first. And this physical identification can only be done by the family of the, the girls. Meaning that what? They'll get to ascertain or confirm whether some of the things that you mentioned yeah, belong to those girls. You see, if you get them involved in that physical identification, of course it, is, it will be, I think, traumatic for them to come and identify in the first place. But they need to be taken through some protocol and be emboldened enough to come out and then see whether those items that were found indeed belong to the girls. As for the fourth one, uh, there were I think dresses. And they, they, we have heard that they, those dresses belong to that girl, Abeka or something. So this physical identification I was talking about, um, I think should have been done early enough and uh, the family would have now been uh, well aware that, oh, these girls um, are our girls. These girls are not our girls. Because I'm sure if you look at the teeth, if you look at the teeth, the denture, Somebody who knows any of them will be able to tell whether the thief belong to this or not. Somebody who knows them will be able to identify the hairstyle or the hair that was found alongside the skeletal remains and the, the waist beads as well. So that should have been done. And I have talked to some, I talked to some people that this has to be done. Physical identification, making them involved in identification of them initially, and then the DNA will add finality to the, what do you call it, the, the identification. And you are saying this because you, you think ideally that should be the procedure of um, getting them involved, communicating what the outcome likely could be yeah. or not, yeah. and then they will embrace 
the claim present in yeah, here. Exactly. But I because see. if they had come out to say, oh, these beads that we found belong to our girl, this hair is that of our girl and all that, and they will not maybe dispute the, 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 the what do you call it, the DNA testing. Now, the DNA testing, me, I don't know how it is done, even though I was director general CID. There are experts who conduct it. So sometimes when it comes, you may even want to say, oh, how? You may ask questions and all that before maybe you begin to agree or accept the result of the DNA. And the family, who knows about DNA? But it is a scientific sort of analysis that has been done. And the, if the result is positive, it is positive. Unless, of course, somebody else wants to so do some mischief. But I don't think experts will do any mischief of the kind. And so I'm sure the results are positive and they are good results. They represent those of the girls. The remains represent those of the girls. But how are they going to appreciate? I mean, it, the problem is appreciating and accepting because they have no idea what, how the DNA is done, who does it, and even the credibility of the person who is conducting the, the DNA. In order not to say that you are indicting the police service, or the, how would you credit the police service with, or the CID particularly, with the posture and the, the way they went about this uh, case? No, I'm not indicting anybody, but as I said, I have... No, I'm asking you. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I'm not indicting them. But probably, they might have done, probably, at the background or on the quiet and we are not aware. But I think I have indicated to some officers that they need to do this. It's, it's important that this identification, this form of identification must also be done it may be, maybe they have tried, and the family probably did not come forward to do it. But taking them through some protocol, like the IGP went and visited them, and then they now agreed that they will give swaps or samples of them for the DNA to be done. In much the same way, they could have been persuaded upon to also come, look at the, 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 the skeletal remains and those things that were found with them, and then proceeded to identify or not identify that, oh, this hairstyle, when our girl vanished, that was the hair, yeah. that the hairstyle that she wore at the time of vanishing. Well, uh, uh, and thank you very much for passing through the studio for uh, this brief uh, contribution to this. And uh, we also know that your experience has come in handy in trying to make these contributions for us on this case. It's a, it's a very sad moment, wouldn't yeah, you say? Sure, sure, mm. very sad. Okay, uh, we've had in the studio uh, a former Director General for the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service, COP Bright to Drill, helping us um, do some great discussions on the subject of now confirmed the killing of the um, Takrati girls who initially were deemed missing. Now, in the first place, uh, we also have uh, Kujo Yangson, who is right there in Takrati and had been interacting uh, with various members of the families of the girls, uh, had already, as we brought you, visited a home of one of the victims. And talking about homes, we all do have homes. And we're talking about how you can get some of the best one-stop information through a platform, the Habitat Fair. And we'll bring you the latest for our 2019 Joy News Habitat Fair and, um, of course, it's going to be happening from the 20th of September to the 22nd of the same month, 2019. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll bring you home news of the Habitat Fair 